Welcome to a new test and teardown video. I'm playing with all the Brut and Care kind of stuff at the moment, so I might as well just play with this one as well. The fun thing is, if you look up a gating system on uh, Brut and Care, you'll find quite a lot of different units. None of them looks like this one. That means I cannot look this up. I can't find manuals, I can't find anything, because there isn't any type number at all on this unit. And I can only guess what it is and what it's used for. That is a little bit annoying. Well, well, and we got in an emitter pulse of minimum and maximum bananas. No clue if it is microseconds or megaseconds, you know? Uh, that is also a little bit... Uh, all this minimum and maximum, you know? I guess it's between something in this area, right? But here, there's no limit of what it could be. Here we got some width. Okay, yes. Perfectly fine. Well, well. Maybe that is not so important for what this thing is doing. I expect you put in some audio... And then it will cut out a tiny little piece of that. And that is what you're measure, measuring somehow. But for what purpose? Well, well. If only I had the manual. But I will probably go and find a manual of a similar gating system. And then see exactly how they thought it could be you know, used for. Let's look at the rear side. Maybe we can guess how to use this thing by looking at the rear. Because here we find a lot more information. Receiver, recorder. So that will be like a DC signal, right? Gate logic, gate input. So what is what is the difference between logic and input? Is this an output or is this, this is an input? I mean, really? And... 5 volt RMS sensitivity. They don't really help you a lot, right? Levels, or frequency ranges, pulse emitter out. So this is probably an output for for your scope. Enable and trick. That's also quite interesting, right? CV input. So that is a constant wave input. That is just a sine wave input. Again, no frequency range. Ooh, this is going to be a tough, <laughs> tough time figuring this out. I mean, let's just try and see if I'm smart enough to figure this out before reading anything at all, okay? So this is going to be real fun, okay? So <laughs> you could probably skip half of the video <laughs> while I'm just totally goofing around figuring out what this is and how it's used, okay? And <laughs> in the rest of the videos... I, at the end of it, I probably figured it out. Okay, <laughs> let's let's open it first. Uh, that's gonna be at least a little bit more fun. So we are in. I removed all the side plates. I believe this is uh, the top, and that PCB is only mounted with one screw here. It's just hangling, dingling here, and I see somebody soldering around here. Probably a trimmer that's missing. So there's definitely a problem with this uh, unit. Somebody was doing service and then gave up. And it's actually not easy to see what's going on here. Since emitter section. Got a little bit of wires and stuff going on here. Oh, another screw is completely loose. And that is the bottom part. It's most likely some sort of a transformer or some goody thing in there. I mean, we need to open this a lot more to see what is going on. Oh, heat sinks and goody thingies. And that is the right side. Okay, that looks like power supplies, right? Is 
V? Valve? Really? No, 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 no. 5 volts, 15 volts, 15 volts. So it's just RPMs. Okay. Oof. Let's get back to Earth here. <laughs> but it's a, a classic beauty, but it looks a lot older. Also from the mains connector here. I mean, this one could be quite old. Also, the PCBs looks a little bit, you know, quite old tech from a Rulenker. Also, this looks a little bit like homebrew kind of level. There must be a reason why I can't Google this unit. Maybe it's a very early prototype or something like that. Because all the later versions, they got much... They got, I think, double the number of knobs, uh, the gating systems you can find if you... Uh, Google search, picture search, or just search for boiling care and gating system. It's definitely not looking at all like this. But all right, so here it is. We need to open this. All right, we are in, like they say. The fun thing is this top PCB and the four holes, they don't line up at all here. So there's definitely no way I can put in the screws again. If there was, of course, only one screw because there is no alignment. Oy, 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 look at all that stuff. That NAND gate here is from 70, 71, 71, 69. So, I mean, okay, the newest is 71. Yeah. So I think this uh, unit is from 71, so that is... Oy, 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 oy. So that is probably power supplies, right? We also got some RBMs here. LM305 or something like that, yeah. So we got power supplies right here, okay? That should be quite easy to figure out if that is up and running. I don't know about that. Can I just... Yeah, I can do that. Mains transformer, definitely. See? And then... Some sort of an audio amplifier. And we've got two diodes. Ah, oh, that is biasing. Biasing for this circuit, right? And then those two diodes, they're of course on the heat sink. Hoo yui temperature compensated bias. Lovely, lovely. That's how you do it. And, uh, yeah, that's what I think it is. It says here, yes, it does indeed say power supply. So that is not lying, and they are also saying all the different voltages here. So, I mean, I got a serious chance to get this thing up and running, and this is the emitter section. Oh, and they're also nice and friendly here to tell me what is what, more or less little bit of wires and stuff is it repair or is it modifications or is it done back in the 70s or i mean it looks so much like a prototype this uh, kind of thing yeah thank you that's lovely i gotta go now i've been looking quite a lot on this unit and I am back to tell you a little bit about my findings. Yeah, somebody did indeed remove one of the trimmers here. And that is a monostable uh, multi-vibrators. So it's um, some sort of a timing circuit here. Uh, probably for the different uh, um, pulses it can generate. And of course when one of them is gone, this circuit is not going to work. 
what I would expect those two here. We got different values here, and we got, I mean, more or less the same, or another value maybe. I don't know. It's impossible to to guess where we are, right? But if we look a little bit like on the solderings here, it looks really, really bad. Kind of prototype style. And also if you look more in here, that pot meter is definitely not fit for that hole. Probably that one was. So that is also serviced. And if you look at, yeah, here it, here it is. Look at that piece of metal here, and that resistor. There's just no isolation safety distance at all. And if we look at this PCB, the holes here, it just really don't add up. If I try and put it here, and then I look through the hole, Look, how is that hole going to line up with that hole? Not uh, going to match at all in any way, right? And there is no no way um, to make this match unless you loosen that screw and you it, see you can't move this to the left, or you can't move it to the right. You can only loosen it and make it bend. So that means this screw needs to go sideways. I mean, the more I look at this, the more I feel everything here is just a prototype. Honestly, it's just so heavily modified and it's just far, far from the regular Boulenkea kind of standard that we are used to. They, they belong very close to the stars and what we see here is just so, you know, homebrew kind of level, isn't it? So this got to be a prototype, and I can't find any information on this online. So this may be the only unit that escaped the factory or something. Or maybe this was custom built, and then the customer accepted uh, just this kind of level. I don't know. There is no explanation, really. I think I managed to get this thing up and running. <laughs> Actually, all I did was to find adjust the voltages uh, on the power supply. And I think one of the timing chips here had a loose connection. Um, I could s see that when I took out those two chips, they've been soldered before. So somebody did service here and then they removed the chips put in sockets and then put in the chips into the sockets without cleaning the pins. Uh, you know, that is of course a good way to make loose connections and stuff. So, but now it's actually responding uh, <laughs> to uh, my pulses and my input. And uh, so this is the, the scope trigger output. And let me show you if I play with the width here. Look at that, the top of the green one. So this is the width of that one, right? And then, see, this is the delay. So it's not moving so much here on the delay time. But what if I move this delay down here? And then I dial this knob again. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that funny? Let's go back again. So the the blue one here, that's actually the output. And this one is my sine wave input. So look, there's one pulse coming out. And it's actually doing this itself, this zero crossing detection, generating the output and then cutting in. Oh, let me zoom in so you can see what's happening. So here it's cutting in and cutting out, and then zero detection and all that kind of stuff that is done internally uh, by this unit. So I think it's actually quite smart. It can do this. So what happens if I, this is a one kilohertz uh, input, right? So if I change the signal to two kilohertz, 
Look what happens. Isn't that funny? What if I go three? Aha! So the gate time. You can now fit in two sine waves. Like that, right? Let me move it. So it's easier to see what's going on here, right? So that was three kilohertz, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten kilohertz. That is pretty cool. So I actually think this uh, this works. And if I zoom out a lot on the timing here, so we can see the next pulse right here, right? Then it's actually responding here. Let me try and dial that. Oh, it was not that one. It was this one, right? Yes, here we go. See? Definitely. So yeah, the unit is alive. It is able to gate incoming audio pulses into tiny little pulses. And uh, I don't really know what you can use this for today because you don't really do analog uh, room measurements uh, with like analog equipment like this. You're, today you're just using a PC with some PC software that's doing basically the same, but in software, right? But all this stuff is doing that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a few things I want to show you. Hang on. Power consumption is only 3.8 watts. So we got that noted. I also wanted to show you all sorts of modifications. Look at that pin on that transistor. It has been lifted and bended away. And look at this solder blob, blob left here in the middle of the pictures. Uh, I think. I think it's because they changed this pot meter. Oh yeah, there was another one here. This is the power supply. I don't know what you call this. Not the best kind of soldering, huh? But this is probably somebody's been modifying the different voltages. I don't know exactly why they've been doing this. I trimmed the, the voltages a little bit down. Uh, it says uh, plus minus uh, 15 and it was uh, adjusted to 17. So I trimmed it as low as I could and that is like 16.2. So I guess uh, some of those modifications uh, has something to do with the voltages. Five volts uh, was absolutely spot on. But, but the other one here is like really weird and then I don't know what, yeah see? This one is not connected. And this is a tantal, tantalium capacitor. And somebody was probably angry about that one. Oh, ay, ay, ay. I really don't like them, so. Yeah, but it, it looks like an internal prototype that somehow left the factory. Or maybe an unpatient customer was crying to get this nice piece of equipment before it was ready to go in a higher volume but also when i when i googled this unit oh, let me turn this off you cannot find this particular model anywhere online you can find many others looking uh, different more knobs and more features and all that kind of stuff but exactly this model you're not able to find i will include a link to to the more normal uh, to find gating systems and then um, you can read about how it's used uh, for um, for a room correction or room um, loudspeakers microphones and all that kind of stuff and to avoid echoes from the wall and all that kind of things by measuring uh, or gating the measured signal directly to analog measurement equipment without the echoes uh, so that is uh, more or less uh, how this was uh, used